I've been told. Fast, strong, but still learning. 21-year-old unbeaten prospect Danny Garcia, round number three against Ashley Theophane. Well, Garcia comes out with what I think he needs to take control of this fight to jab. And Theophane comes out doing what his approach has been from the opening bell. Get off, pot shot, and try to move afterwards. Pick spots. Looks like Garcia wants to stay right there and get him to engage with him. Leo Vane doesn't want to engage, Joe. There's a looping wide right hand from Theo Fane when Garcia was quick to fire right to the body. Now Again, looking to needs, flick that jab out there. He needs that jab. I think he needs a hard, real stiff jab. You no, know, uh, discombobulating jab. A jab, even if he lowers the sights on it a little bit with a guy like Theo Fane and aims it to the chest. Just to keep Theo Fane, like I said, disorganized a little bit in control. Stabilize him a little bit. You're not going to stabilize a guy like that if you're just looking for one shot. There's a snapping jab that connected from Garcia now to the inside. So far, the maturity level I talked about is favoring Theo Fane. He's doing more of what he needs to do than Garcia is doing of what he needs to do. <laughs> Theo Fane, seven and a quarter pounds less than his last fight. He came here ready. Made a comment before the fight that he didn't think Danny Garcia was ready for this level of a fight. Well, I said earlier that Theo Fane shouldn't lead with left hooks. He shouldn't just cover up in front of Garcia because he gives him that body. And Garcia, if he gets his engine going a little, his confidence going a little bit, he's a pretty good body puncher. You know, I think there's something going on in Theo Fane's mind right now, Joe. I just see a twinkle in his eye. I'm not saying it's going to work, but I think he starts seeing an immature guy in his mind that maybe he can back up. Maybe he can test that way a little bit. Instead of just doing the sniper attack thing he was doing early, I think he's starting to try to back him up. He sees a young guy in front of him, mm -hmm. and he wants to see how that young guy's going to behave in a fight. Said he saw fear in his eye leading up to this fight. Obviously, 10 rounds here, so I just see a change. I see a little change right here. Coming forward more, Theo Payne. Last minute of his third round, that has been the case. Whatever happens, stay focused. The up-and-coming you know Danny Garcia, don't do, second don't do fight no on more. ESPN. When our researcher hands, interviewed back, him, okay? he asked he's an interesting question. He got an okay? interesting he's answer. Listen to this. Around, okay? He asked me a question. He said, what do people don't know about you? And I said, oh, I got six toes in my right foot. Do <laughs> you ever say, hey, I want to see your six toe? Uh, all the time. All the time. <laughs> Well, you remember Andrew Six Heads Lewis? Well, here's Six Toes Garcia. Except he really has six toes. Andrew Lewis right. didn't have six exactly. heads. <laughs> well, we try to bring you every aspect. That's digging deep. Yeah, we, that's digging that's deep. Digging we try deep to bring you everything that's out there about our contestants in the ring. And that's an example of it right there. I don't know what the heck it means as far as his boxing ability. Well, it's in the shoe, Teddy. He's good to go. But... Maybe he's got a little better balance, but I'd rather see a better jab if I was a back of Garcia right now. Now, you noted at the end of the third round that the disposition of Ashley Theophane had started to change, where maybe he's gaining a little confidence of now coming forward and being just a touch more the aggressor. And it's going to be a good or a bad thing. The good thing is he's going to break down Garcia, maybe. The bad thing is you're going to get caught. And if he gets caught, he could get caught to the body again. Garcia has been a good body puncher, but against less opposition, obviously. You know, part of what you do, it's not that he can't do it with Theo Fane. He did it with less opposition. A lot of people say, well, they were lesser guys. That's why he was able to do it with. I disagree. He could do it with Theo Fane. The confidence level is different. Mm -hmm. So with the lesser guy, you're more confident, and you try it. And you do it without hesitation. With the better guys, you're less confident. You're a little bit more hesitant, and you don't try. 
It's not that you can't do it. You're not as sure as you are with guys that you know you have a big edge with. Caught him with that right hand that came after the left, but still not much of a jab at all from Garcia. Well, what I like there with Garcia is they won't lead punches that caught Theo Vein. They were counter punches. He allowed Theo Vein to come in wide, fall in a little, and he's taking advantage of that right now. And he's got a thud to his punches. And again, it's on the back end that Garcia is doing good this round, Joe, not the front end. It's not on his lead punches. It's when Theo Vein falls in, comes in. Like right there. Right there. It's on the back end that Garcia is turning it this round. Two times Theo Vein has thrown that looping right hand, and both times Garcia came right back and scored well, especially to the midsection. Right now, Garcia taking advantage of the mistakes of Theo Vein. That's all it is. Taking advantage of him coming forward a little wide and leaning a little. And again, you see it, Garcia looking for the counter shot, especially on the right side. He's pulling that right shoulder back a little bit like that, and then filling the hole with the right hand, the right hand or the right uppercut. A lot of people say, well, Teddy, this round, you know, the talent you talked about, the power started showing to Garcia. I would say also the experience and the intellect. He started finding a place for the counter. And it's been working. Good round for Danny Garcia. It's, well, Garcia hasn't used his jet, but he switched to counter punching that last round. Right there, you see he dips back that right shoulder. He allows Theo Vane to do some of his work for him, Joe. He reaches in. Garcia, nice counter. And it turned it around a little bit, turned the rhythm around that last round. Round five now, scheduled for ten. Danny Garcia. The unbeaten prospect got things going there in that last round. Joe and Teddy with you here in El Paso. Our main event still to come is a good one. Antonio Escalante against Mickey Roman. And we're glad to bring in our guest studio analyst, super middleweight titleist, currently in the midst of that Super Six tournament, Andre Ward. And Andre, of course, you know very well what it is to be an unbeaten fighter on the way up and those levels of progression. Where do you feel Danny Garcia is right now? I feel Danny Garcia is doing a great job, but I agree with Teddy. I think uh, he understands that he does have power. I mean, he has the Cleto Reyes gloves on. He knows he's a puncher, but he needs to hide the power because as you step up the competition, guys are not going to go out too easily. So I think his opponent is really just setting him up to catch him down the road and really just lull the, the young fighter to sleep. So I'm just hoping he starts boxing a little bit more and understands that it may take a few rounds to soften up his opponent and then eventually knock him out. Well, that's why you're a world champion. A lot of guys have talent, you have talent, but you have the intellect and the understanding of that, Andre. And talking about being undefeated, I don't know if anyone's brought this up to you recently, but you're not only undefeated, you're undefeated for about 14 years. I mean, it's been, Gold medal in the I think it was 1996, the last time you lost a fight. That's correct, Teddy. I, I don't like to lose, to say the least. <laughs> you sure know how to do that one thing. And that's win. That's right. And that's a great talent. Good to have you with us. And by the way, happy birthday, Andre. It wasn't your birthday this week? 23rd. 23rd of February. Thank you, guys. There you go. Glad to have you with us on your birthday week. Andre Ward in studio with Brian Kenny tonight. Of course, the gold medalist from 04. Teddy, you saw him have that glory in Athens. Yeah, he did it. Uh, he did it with a little bit of a heavy heart, too. You know, he's... He's not only a terrific fighter, and I think he's one of the best out there. You talk pound for pound, I think you have to start putting Andre Ward into that conversation. A lot of people will say, Teddy, you're putting him in there already? I say, yeah, he's complete. You know, he can fight with you when he has to. He can box you. He can counter you. He can switch the southpaw. You know, he's consistent. He doesn't wilt under pressure. I mean, he can do all those things, and he's a great human being. He has that great character inside and outside the ring, and when I say he did it with a heavy heart, he did it in memory of his... His dad, who he had lost. End of five here. Garcia in control. Go online now.